plagiarism. Tarantino has been accused of being a little naughty in this regard. And it came off the back of the, the film that we're reviewing this week, Reservoir Dogs. And it started to uh, drum up a bit of accusatory critiques following his um, release of this, this film. And particularly as it pertains to the 1987 Hong Kong film by Ringo Lam, City on Fire. What I'm going to do for you, ladies and gentlemen, today is go through the similarities between these two. We'll discuss whether this is a case of plagiarism, whether it's a case of something else, something worse, something better. And then we want to have a bit more of a discussion around the role of stealing in art with the, the case study of Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Why we think that? it's okay that... Because a, yeah, well, a lot of people are aware of how bad yeah, it we'll can give, get sometimes. To be honest, we'll give this example, right? And it's not just that he maybe does it. It's that he completely gets away with it. No one seems to really care. Mm -mm. Occasionally mentioned, but... And we want to understand why that is. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with that? Then, I am you? excited to give my uh, humble opinion on it. Nice. Can't wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> Brilliant. So, can you hurry up so I can give my humble opinion, please? <laughs> Take our time. <laughs> City on fire. So, I'm going to provide a breakdown now of the film's climax. So, it's about 20 minutes, um, which also will be a bit of an argument as to whether it's plagiarism or not. Spoilers ahead for Reservoir Dogs, presumably. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By osmosis. <laughs> yes. You will be able to understand the uh, whole plot of uh, Reservoir Dogs from this. So, City on Fire follows, in the final 20 minutes, a gang of robbers with code names who fail a jewellery heist. Names being Brother Joe, Brother Chu, Brother Fu and Brother Nam. The job is ruined after one of the robbers goes crazy and starts shooting civilians. Starting to sound familiar, Jambo. It certainly bloody well is. Police were waiting at the incident of the job because Brother Chu is undercover. During the escape, Brother Fu works to escape with Brother Chu. Fu, at one point, unloads two guns through the windshield of a cop car. <laughs> Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. Yep. Yes, baby. Maybe actually a few okay, yeah. references. I'm Harvey Keitel so. hides behind a wire fence when he sees some cop car come in and then leans around the corner and murders two people. During this escapade, Brother Chu kills an innocent and also gets shot in the stomach. Brother Chu, who is the undercover cop. Brother Chu, who is and the Mr. Under Orange. And the undercover cop, Mr. Orange, Tim... What's his name? Roth. Tim Roth also shoots what if you didn't know, was his accent teacher, his yeah. accent coach, the, really person, the woman who played... Deserved to shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> Shy job, his accent's wank. <laughs> right, okay, so Brother Chu kills an innocent. Also, it's not wank, it's just a bit annoying. Also gets shot in the stomach. Then, what next? They rendezvous at a meeting point in an abandoned warehouse where they are met by the big boss of the operation. The boss lays the blame at Chu's feet saying he is a cop. Fu points his gun at the boss, and there is a Mexican standoff with people. I got. I, I was looking at the thing. I haven't watched this, but I was looking at the Mexican standoff, and there's a few of them there, and they're all pointing. They stood in different positions, but the structure of who is pointing a gun at who is identical. Yeah, yes, literally. The boss points Frame at the suspect. Yeah. The, the Mr. White in Reservoir Dog points the gun at the boss. Yeah. And then the boss's son points the gun mm -hmm. at Mr. White and the exact same structure. Literally the exact same structure. So if you couldn't see the similarities between that description and Reservoir Dogs, maybe you're deaf? Because <laughs> it's the same film. Okay. But what I wanted to ask you, Jambo, is, is this plagiarism? Okay, very quick question before we ask, is this plagiarism? What do you think? Let us know in the <laughs> comments below. Right. Is it plagiarism? Yeah, go okay. on. Okay. Here's my thinking. I don't know exactly, exactly what the definition of plagiarism is, mm. but I want to just start this conversation off by saying that I think it's totally fucking fine. Yeah. I have no issue with it mm. because it's Why is that? so completely repackaged. Yeah. It's to a different market. Right, because even he's come out and said, "I want to make a Western version of this film," mm. and 
I've always felt like, specifically in art, I mean, all of art, as we know, mm. is kind of inspiration based and you yeah. know the, the phrase steal like an artist we all steal from art and i think that part of the thing that makes it okay in tarantino's case is that he is so uh sincerely passionate about the thing that he is mm. doing that it feels okay to me it's not like i tried to come up with a, an, an alternative example it's not like somebody who doesn't watch films and doesn't make films just watches a single tarantino and goes i'm just going to try and make that film again Mm. He's watched millions and millions of films. He outwardly says, I love this film two bits and I want to make a Western version of it. Fine. I don't care. Yeah, I, I, I completely get where you're coming from. Also worth noting, it's not like he has shot for shot gone through. He's, he's, he's basically lifted a story and then he's provided so much extra sauce yeah. to this that you got to say, I mean, it is considered a groundbreaking <laughs> Piece of art, Reservoir Dogs, changed the nineties. Yes, changed a lot. Reservoir Dogs is responsible for many people who would be listening to this to be into film. Yes, uh, and more to the point, where would dialogue be in films right now if Tarantino hadn't come on the scene and he mm. didn't plagiarize that? No, he co- he took a couple of pivotal points from the structure of that story, but dialogue being one of the things. He, he didn't lift that. That's his, and that's part of what makes it so special, is the dialogue. And an interesting point that I saw, which I hadn't thought about, so recontextualization, okay. basically his remixing of a, you know, piece like a song of cover. Yeah, and, and how prevalent that is compared to, you know, 50, 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. Now a lot of art, whether it's in music, whether it's in film, which is Reboot City and has been for quite a while, True. is basically recycling ideas and trying to find a way of doing them justice. And to be honest, the difference between laziness, let's say plagiarism, but maybe more laziness, and great art is how additive it is. Yes. And you've got to say in this case, I mean, he, he took, for instance, he said that this sequence that I've just described takes place on the final 20 minutes of the film. Mm. And um, Yam, who who, com- who has commented on this, has said, Ringo, Ringo Lam, who commented on this, has said that he managed to make a full film out of my final 20 minutes. Like, we can't consider this 100%. the same. Yeah, He has really beefed up and, and enhanced, added his own yeah. flavour to it, let alone the thing, the, the dialogue addition let's say that was the only thing tarantino did was make good dialogue yes. let alone that groundbreaking yeah. approach to dialogue so in this case i wouldn't say it's plagiarism and i guess the greater question is is the way art is produced in that way moral is that right should it be done in that yeah way? i think basically there are a couple of caveats that i think are worth uh, doing so for example um be additive Okay, yeah. like you said, um, <clears throat> one of the ones I was thinking was, and I'm sure he does this, is take from many, many sources. Steal like an artist, mm. but don't steal from one place. Like, take, like I think it's, it's good art to go, I like this guy's soundtrack, but I like this guy's dialogue, but I like, and no one's put these guys together very well yeah. yet, so that's what I'm going to do. That, to me, isn't, it's not even a question of morally wrong. Yeah, it's that's like a conductor. Absolute, that's, that is what art is for me, mm. is like, and then, yeah, of course, if you can add on top of that, fine. But you you could not make a film without unknowingly be building on stuff that yeah. has happened before. I mean, you study any art history and it is basically just following the pivotal changes that some master of the craft has done and then basically every single other piece of art following takes from it a bit. It's just the way art works. Yeah, I've heard... Whoops. I've heard arguments before that there are only like five core stories. Yeah, I've heard about this, yeah. And they are, and everything else is some sort of manifestation of those, you know, a tragedy, a romance, a comedy. Yeah. You know, that sort of, you know, if you take it back to those roots, it's almost like languages. Yeah. You see things branching off and there are like root tongues, aren't there? 
I mean, pretty much every single story ever, supposedly, I'm told, can be viewed through the lens of the three-act structure, for example. And yeah, you might juggle it around a bit, but like, I guess what we're saying in a way is <clears throat> you cannot not use other people's work. Mm. So we can't just by default say, if you are using someone else's work, then that is plagiarism and therefore wrong. But also there, it, there are situations in which it's not okay so if you only take from one person's work, that's not okay. If you add nothing, that's not okay. And Tarantino in particular, in the case of Res Reservoir Dogs, brings so much new stuff to it mm. and so much talent to it that there is, that, that is absolutely up on the side of this is totally fine. You've yeah. got way too much new stuff to this. It's interesting though what you say. There, there's clearly a point where it goes from being okay to not okay. And by no means is that a clear divider. Yes. So what is a, what general rules you said don't take from one person? In Tarantino's case, it's pretty far from what we would consider plagiarism. Yeah. But at what point but how does do it they become? determine it? Yeah. How much how much closer would Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs had to have been to that film for it to then cross that line for us? Mm. What do you think? Let us know in the comments yeah, below. It's, it's not an easy, not an easy question. That that's not a, that's not a black or white. I I I mean, I think I can say personally with absolute confidence that Tarantino Reservoir Dogs absolutely fine. Mm. You know what helped him as well is how much he'd get in front of it. So this came up at Cannes when Reservoir Dogs finally got some traction. As you mentioned earlier on, it was about a year before it started to really, to really kick on, and. This was something that was labelled at him. People said, we've seen City on Fire. What, what's your take? And he was like, I steal from everything. Yes. And I'm going to continue to steal. Great art is great stealing. Yes. And making it your own and trying to do a better job of crafting those things and trying to trying to improve it. Additive, mm. you know, mm. like I, I, I will have made a thumbnail for this very video you're watching. I didn't just never look at a thumbnail in my entire life. Like I, I look at them all the time and I'm trying to think like, what do they do that I like? What, and like mm. you can't, you cannot make art without looking at other people's art and saying, what do I like from that? And what do I like mm. from that? And bringing, and then trying to do it better. I think if you, I think there's an element for me, now I'm thinking about it, of trying to make it better. Yeah. Like if you are just trying to recreate, that's not okay. But if you are trying to make a better version of something, maybe that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Maybe not always, though. Yeah. There what if you, okay, what if you're trying to make a better version of something, but you fail <laughs> spectacular? <laughs> not just because it's bad, but let's say in the case of songs, right? Yes. Uh, well, actually, you no, know, because that would be more covers. But maybe you are, I'm going to create a great version of this, and it's going to be great because I'm in it. And then you're in it, and then it's the same film or the same performance. So is it results based? If it is, should I amend my statement to it's okay if it is better? <laughs> the I'll be honest with you, the ends always justify the means. Always in the in the court yes. of public opinion. You know what? I'm happy with that Good as the conclusion, conclusion of the main yeah. video. Thank yeah. you so much for Don't listening. Don't even comment. We'll see you on the next. That's, that's, that's <laughs> a fact. This debate is done. See you on the next one. <laughs>